in many ways. Uh, my book took 18 years from the time I started writing it until it finally came out. And it's been extremely busy ever since. This has been, I think, the busiest year of my life. Uh, but I'm still doing music with Blue Coop, Joe and Albert Bouchard, uh, who you saw in Paris. Uh, we're taking a little bit of a break right now, but I will be still traveling around the United States doing uh, book signing events. Uh, so it's, it's exciting all around. I'm having a lot of fun, lots of creativity. Well, we got no choice. All you girls and boys. Well, um, basically, I got an email saying, would you like to play on a track? And I said, yes. <laughs> and uh, so Bob Ezrin, the producer, came to New York City, and Neil Smith and I went into the recording studio. We live near New York City. And we uh, laid down the track uh they said that we got the take on the very first try, and then the second try we got it again, and then the third try we decided that we would play it differently than we usually do, and that's the one that they used on, that will be on the record. Can't salute ya, can't find a flag, the map don't suit ya, but that's a drag. So I believe that goes with the theme of the album of Alice's Dead Drunk Friends. His very first drinking pal was the guitar player Glenn Buxton from the original Alice Cooper group. And Glenn Buxton is best known for that uh, opening riff that he played on Schools Out. So that song is a tribute to Glenn Buxton. Uh, no, that's generally not how recordings are made these days. Uh, we played along with a track that had uh, Brian Johnson's voice was on it and Slash and Joe Perry but uh, and Johnny Depp. But I think that they added... Uh, some other uh, things later after we recorded our part. live on in uh, film uh, and I thought he was a very good rhythm guitar player I wasn't sure about lead uh, guitar but he sounds great on the song so <laughs> so he's a much better guitar player than I think people give him credit for they think that he is an actor that's trying to play guitar but he's actually a guitar player that became an actor. Bob Ezrin, the producer, me, 
Neil Smith and I in the studio, and we recorded our parts, and then they took the track back to Nashville, where Bob Ezrin's studio is, and they added a couple of other musicians, and then they mixed it, and, uh, and we didn't hear it until about a month after that.
Well, uh, my favorite thing is how we decided that we were going to shock the world and we were going to get attention and we want we wanted people to walk out of our concerts uh, either loving us or hating us. We didn't want anybody, but we wanted people to be talking about us. So we did some shows where people had no idea what to expect. And then we were throwing chickens into the audience and we had an explosion of feathers. And uh, bands just didn't do stuff like that back then. And I just loved the expression that we would get on the faces of a whole audience, like thousands of people would all be looking at us like, what is this? <laughs> I love that. Oh, I am, you know, and writing the book, uh, took me back there, even though I really believe that an artist needs to keep moving forward and not look back. But, uh, but I was looking back, but I was doing it in, I had never written a book before, so it was moving forward artistically, even though I was reliving the past. But uh, yes, I found out some things that I didn't realize. Uh, uh, the, um, you know, the, when you write a book, all of a sudden things that you think that you know so well, uh, you start to see these repeating things and you realize that it was a little bit different than you actually thought it was. And also because I'm an artist that likes to improvise, I let the story sort of tell itself, you know, I didn't say, okay, I'm going to write a book and this is what it's going to be before I wrote it. I thought, okay, I'll start writing and I'll see where it takes me. So it was a new experience for me. that Alice is reading it right now. there. 